Welcome to Cunningham Piano Company. I'm Rich Galassini. You just heard a very rare piano. It's almost 150 years old. It was built in the 1870s, and it was performed on by my friend and colleague, Hugh Sung. Hugh is a wonderful pianist who has a worldwide reputation, and we are here at Cunningham Piano Company's restoration facility, where we take instruments that were glorious in a day and bring them back to their original glories for them to serve another generation. I happen to be sitting right in front of a Steinway Grand Piano that was originally built in 1917. So that makes this piano over 100 years old, my gosh. We just finished many, many months of work and our goal was to make this piano look and perform just like the day it left the Steinway factory in 1917. We have people send their instruments from us from all over the United States, from Canada, from Mexico, from Asia, from Europe to do full restoration. And for folks that would like to get a world-class piano like this, we also restore them and sell them to the public. You're about to take a walk with me through our factory. Welcome to Cunningham Piano. This space is where every piano comes and begins. Our disassembly happens here. All of the measurements that we have to take to make a piano what it's supposed to be all occurs in this room. I happen to be standing in, another, in front of another piano that's about 130 years old, and we've just started working on it. So the first thing we do is unstring the piano, and then we take measurements. We have to take really careful measurements because the soundboard, which is what I'm hitting right here, the bridges, everything that we make to replace parts that are cracked. We see cracks in the soundboard here, here, many, many cracks. This needs to be replaced. But we also drill holes that hole is called a locator. What that allows us to do is to make sure that everything is in exactly the right spot when we bring it back. You'll see several of those holes around a piano where we're taking measurements, but that assures that the science and the design of the piano is exactly what it needs to be. Now the next step is to remove the plate and start to build a new soundboard and bridge. Follow me. This happens to be an upright piano. This was built by Beckstein in Berlin, Germany. Fantastic, spectacular upright. And there's a family who absolutely dearly loves this piano. They brought it over to the United States with them and they would love for it to be in their family for another 70 years. That's what we do here at Cunningham Piano Company. Now the cast iron frame has already been lifted out of the piano. In fact, it's right behind the piano, right here. Now, when this cast iron frame is inside a piano, we see the other side, which is beautifully finished. It looks gorgeous, we'll see that in a few moments. The back of it is just gray cast iron. That's the same material that the Liberty Bell is made out of. It has great tensile strength, so that's gonna help withstand the tension of hundreds of strings pulled to a huge tension. Now this piece of wood that I have in my hands right now is called a pin block. The pin block really just accepts tuning pins that hold the strings in place. Now the tuning pins are high-tech screws that go into a multi-laminated piece of wood, but if you see, there's cracks. There's one here, and if we look up and down, we'll see several cracks all along here. Well, these tuning pins were not holding, and that's something that happens to pianos. Pianos are built to fail in this way after anywhere from 50 to 100 years. So what we're starting to do is to craft by hand a new replacement pin block. This is multi-laminated quarter sawn rock maple that we're starting to make fit right behind this cast iron frame to make this piano function the way it did when it was brand new. Now this is only work that can be done by hand. I wish we could program a computer to make it exactly like the last one. Maybe someday we will, I don't think so. We wanna do this by hand to make sure it's perfect for this piano because since these pianos were originally built by hand, one to the next to the next could be a little different even within the same model. So the next step after this will be to replace the soundboard. This machine is called a soundboard press. And what it literally does is presses a soundboard. Now the soundboard is a big piece of wood. Let's just take a look and I'll refresh your memory here. This is the soundboard. And that's the amplifier of the piano. But even here we see cracks in the soundboard. Here, here, big cracks. This soundboard is not going to do its job. If we have a cracked speaker in our stereo system, it won't do the job either. So we make a new soundboard. Every soundboard has a crown to it. Think about the back of a violin. 
and the strings pressed down here and that tension between the strings and that crown are what create the piano sound that we know and love. So in this machine here, the soundboard is supported by ribs running behind it and that will be put into this machine and pressed down on this jig, really. This jig has a curve to it. If you look closely, it's not a flat piece of wood. Forgive the dust, we haven't used this in a couple of weeks. But that curve is what gives us the crown that every soundboard needs. To properly build a soundboard with ribs and bridges to replace on a piano could take us as little as a couple of weeks, but on a very unusual piano, it could take as much as a month. So it's a labor of love, and we want this piano to perform as it was when it was brand new, which frankly sometimes is better than that same company might make today. So that's what happens in this room, just for fun. Right over against the back wall is a cast iron frame for a seven foot grand piano. Now this weighs more than I do. This weighs about 450 pounds, but I'd love for you to take a look at the back of this. So I'm gonna see if I can move this just a little bit. Oh man. Now I'm not sure if we'll be able to get a good shot of the back of this. But again, it is not finished and we see signatures on the back of this. Those signatures were put there by craftspeople who originally assembled this piano, and they knew at the time the only person who would ever see that again is somebody who's going to restore the piano. That's from craftsperson to craftsperson, and that is really cool. Very good, I'm glad I was able to do that. Okay. In this station, our craftspeople work on the key frame. So this supports all the piano keys. Basically, the piano key is a seesaw. So when the front goes down, we push down the key, the back goes up. But everything has to be exactly as it was meant to be. So we have a large pin that acts as a fulcrum here. We also have a front rail pin that makes sure everything stays in alignment so the back goes up exactly where it's supposed to be. Now, when we work on a keyframe, the first thing that we do is clean everything. Then there are fine adjustments that are done in the front and the middle to make sure that the level is still exactly where it was supposed to be 100 years ago. Sometimes that requires shims made out of very thin pieces of paper just to raise it a fraction of a millimeter. So this is exacting work. Now, let's take a look at some keys that are being worked on. If you use your imagination, you can tell that this is a piano key. Normally, we only see this much, and that's generally covered up by ivory or acrylic, like on this grand piano right over here. So that's all that we see. Imagine the rest of it behind. So this section here is where that front rail will go through. That's a new cloth bushing. So these keys have been cleaned. We've replaced or polished this capstan this is called a capstan that connects the key with the action, which we'll see in a moment. There'll be a new bushing put here. Sometimes we'll re-weight the action. These lead weights are in there to give an exact weight and touch to this key. That translates into the pianist being able to communicate with the piano and depending that each note is gonna feel the same way every other note does. Let me put this back. Now I happen to have two action parts. These are parts that this key will actually connect to, and that's what connects the fingers of the pianist to the piano. So several times people have said this, but uh, Wagner once said that the piano is a perfect meld of art and science, and I'm pretty sure he's right. It's a complicated instrument. Thousands of parts work together to give us a musical tone with tons of tension. It is absolutely amazing. So let's leave this section of our factory. On the way, I do want to stop and just take a look at two beautiful baby grand pianos. This is a gorgeous little instrument. And if we just go back 50, 60, 70 years, pianos were absolutely thought of as furniture. So beautiful burled walnut with carved legs or rosewood with gorgeous turned legs and a filigree music rack, all oh, look at that, beautifully carved out. This was not the exception, this was something that was very common, to have a gorgeous piece of furniture accompany the piano. Uh, 
Today, we're much less of this. Not that you can't get this, but it's much more straight, square, clean lines to a piano. I kind of miss these days. Let's walk out and speak to Kurt. We're about to enter one of our action rooms, and the action room has to deal with touch of the piano. So the technician who's working there occasionally needs silence. He's, uh, we're not locking him in here. He's locking us out. <laughs> Kurt, can I come in? Sure. Let me move this out of the way. Remember, we were talking about the furniture. This is a gorgeous Kanabi grand piano. Now, William Kanabi built pianos in Baltimore for many, many years by hand. For a long time, he was the official piano of the Metropolitan Opera. And this piano belongs to a family who's not very local. They sent it quite a distance for us to work on. And this is Kurt Brown. Kurt Brown is our senior veteran piano action technician. Did I, did I leave anything out? I guess not. Okay. So, by the way, it's not that Kurt can't restring a piano, that he can't put in a pin block, that he can't refinish a piano. Certainly he can do all of those things, but he's one of the finest people in the industry when it comes to action work, which Remember, we looked at keys already. Now we're looking at the entire inside of the piano. This is called the piano action. Mm -hmm. Kurt, can you tell us how this works a bit? Well, uh, the, the key, this, the piano action is all the moving parts which um, play the piano mm -hmm. when, when the pianist plays. And uh, the key is what people are most familiar with. And when you press down on it, it's like a teeter-totter. The back end goes up, lifts up the hammer through a series of parts, hammer strikes the string, and returns to the rest position. So this is just like a typewriter. You push a button, you get a note. Is it yeah, that simple? <laughs> well, not quite that simple. No, it's not that simple at all. So I'd love for you to see a profile. Let's get this around so that people can see how this connects together. What this allows is much more complicated. It's not a typewriter or a computer screen or a keyboard where we just press something and get a note. This gives the pianist in a very compact space almost endless ways to strike the note. That gives them ways of playing softly, loudly, different colors, brightness, warmth. They can control all that in this very, very small movement. So this is why uh, some famous musicians have said the acoustic piano is a perfect meld of art and science. This is all the science that allows the pianist to express their art. Kurt, thank you so much. Can you tell us a little bit about the piano you're working on? Sure. Well, this is a early 1900s Kanabi Grand. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a not a complete restoration. It's a partial restoration, which means that uh, by the customer's request, we've been asked to just restore the soundboard yes. uh, rather than replace it. And uh, fortunately, uh, this soundboard was in very good condition, so there was uh, very little... Uh, cracks in it and separations from ribs and things like that that uh, render a soundboard unusable. Is that rare for a piano this age to be able to keep the soundboard? Yes, it, it is. Yeah. Uh, generally speaking, if we want this piano to be like brand new again, we generally, what would you recommend, generally? If we want it to be like brand new, I would say, you know, you would have to, it depends on the condition of the bridges, they can mm -hmm. have cracks in them as well. Yes. Just from swelling and shrinking of humidity and dryness. And uh, we have, say, pull the soundboard out, put a new one in. Right. Recap the bridges. And occasionally we're able to find a piano that's this age that does not need a new soundboard. So that's what we were able to do here. And in fact, at some point this must have been refinished. We didn't do this finish, did we? No, we didn't. So somebody refinished this or they kept it beautifully. And I don't know which, but either way, either way I'm very happy for that. So. Uh, this is a new pin block. Remember that piece of wood that we saw in the other room that was carefully mated to the back of the cast iron frame. These are all new strings. These are, these little holes here are bushings that will hold dampers. Now dampers, they're called that because they dampen the strings vibration when we don't want it to play anymore. That's important. You don't want a note echoing while you're trying to play other notes that don't work with it harmonically. So that's very important. And the adjustment of all these parts. Now Kurt, I have a question for you. We get all these brand new action parts, you screw them in place, you put them in, and they're good to go, right? No. No? Why? Well, I would be out of a job if they... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it is not that simple at all. Uh, tell us a little bit more about what you have to do once the piano comes to you. Well, each, each of these uh, actions have 
thousands of moving parts. And you have to adjust them so that they play evenly for the player. So the player has a good experience, an encouraging experience in playing the piano and the touch of the piano. I have heard you say before that the piano is like having 88 different machines in one box. Yes, mm -hmm. it is like that. Yeah. And uh, you have to adjust those machines so that they work in tandem with one another and make the playing experience encouraging to the player. Now, how long might that take from the moment the piano comes to you if you're putting in parts, then you have to regulate them, and we didn't even talk about this yet, but once they physically feel good, you've got to regulate the density of the felt so they all sound the same. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, if I may mention this, the way that we get a set of hammers, manufacturers of high-end hammers, they procure their felt from the same group of sheep that ate the same foods, that had the same amount of sunlight in their lives because it affects the lanolin in the wool, right? That's what I've heard. That's right, yes. I've, I've heard that too. I've never actually yes. seen that done. But that way we get one big piece of felt that's cut into hammers and it's supposed to be very consistent. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's, it's better than not doing that, but what do you have to do once you have that on there? Well, I have to make the tone of the hammers consistent. Uh, so you're still, even though it's cut from the same felt and everything like that, uh, still there's different uh, little subtle differences in the hammers as you play up and down. The hammers also have to be what we call mated to the strings, which means that they strike the strings evenly rather than on an angle. Uh, so basically you have to make sure that one note to the next one doesn't stand out more than the other when the, when the uh, pianist is playing. And that they also make the piano get the optimum sound out of the piano, both in power and in clarity. So, and that's what we shoot for uh, when we, what we call voice a piano. So the voicing has to do with adjusting those hammers mostly. Yes. Regulation is what we call adjusting all those parts to get to that point. Right. So yes, the moving parts, yes. Can you voice a piano that's not regulated? It'd be best you didn't try. That right. You'd end up going back a few steps, yep. Exactly, exactly. So I guess my original question, I'm sorry, I got you off track. When a piano comes in here with the original parts on it, you have all the new parts. You just hang them on and get them in there in a day or so? No. 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 Tell us, tell us what happens. It takes about uh, two weeks for me to get it to the point to where I'm going to have this in the piano voicing it. And um, also, uh, it's it, each adjustment, you know, there's several adjustments per each note, as I had said before. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have 88 of those to do. Right. It's very time consuming uh, and uh, it's, it's a very labor intensive process. However, having said that, it's like arts and crafts every day. Oh, yeah. Work. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we, we love to get up. All of us love to get up and do this every day. Now, Kurt Brown also has a wonderful reputation. We generally will have a couple of, uh, I call them apprentices. I don't know what else to call them, but people who have some experience in tuning, some experience in maybe regulation or repairs in the home that would like to learn more about this. And you've worked with, I think, dozens and dozens of people over the years. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a good number of them still work with us right here. That's correct. Um, while we're here, I should show you what a damper looks like and performs like. Could you grab one and sort of put it in place so we could just get a feel for that? Certainly. Let's just take this one because it's the biggest, easiest to see. And we don't see most of that when it's in the piano. That's correct. Yep. Uh, this. This damper would damper number one, mm -hmm. uh, the A note. It would pass through what we call the damper guide rail, keeps it in line with the string, and seats it on the string. Uh, there's an action underneath here, which when I say action again, it's the moving parts that play the piano. And I'm going to install that now. So wow, back, more moving parts. More moving parts, yeah, that have to be adjusted. Uh, the back of the teeter-totter, which is the key, lifts on this, which lifts this damper up. And when the key is played, and then when the key is released, it lets the damper fall back down on the string and mute it. Amazing. So we've got thousands of moving parts doing multiple jobs, and they've got to feel like they're all one instrument to the musician, so he can 
manipulate the piano to do what he wants to do. Exactly right. Yeah. So without you, there's no pianist who could play. Yes, I guess you could say that. That's why I still have a job. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Kurt, thank you so much for taking the time. It was sure, great certainly. to chat. Yep. Now, we have up to 15 people here in the factory, and I wish we could take the time to speak to everyone. We're not going to be able to do that, but I do want to take a look and see a lot more of what we do. Kurt, again, thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, here's Geza Mika, and Geza is one of our craftspeople. He's actually doing what we call preparation to a brand new Yamaha piano. We are the region's exclusive dealer of all things Yamaha. So when we're talking about Yamaha pianos, Yamaha digital pianos, Yamaha hybrid pianos, they use tremendous technology and are very, very consistent from piano to piano, but each piano still needs adjustment before we can send it out the door. So he's going through fine regulation so that our customer that has purchased this brand new piano will be very happy when it's all done. Now, Geza actually has been working for our company for only just a little over a year. Am I right about that, Geza? Sure. Yeah. And uh, Geza actually had careers before this. Uh, he's a woodworker. He's actually worked in art preservation with woods for the Philadelphia Museum of Art. So he's got such a wonderful, varied background and can bring so many things to the work of piano. Bottom line is, we're all about helping the musician as an artist. And if you're an artist and a craftsman, oh, wait a minute, that would be an artisan then you can do some really, really great stuff. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm adjusting what's known as let off. And if I play the key very slowly, the hammer moves towards the string, and then it doesn't touch the string. It stops about an eighth of an inch away, and then it drops back a little bit. And what we want to do is get that let off distance the same all the way across and if you have a new piano that's been in a crate and it arrives and you want to prep it um, you need to make small adjustments to the regulation so that's what i'm doing here when Geza is done this piano will be at its best optimum performance so the pianist can sit down enjoy it but there's a lot of work that has to go through the background in the background for us to make the piano what it should be. When we were talking about regulating an old piano, taking new action parts and putting them on a piano, and then making all the adjustments in the voicing, that can take weeks of time. Thankfully, sometimes we only need to spend a few hours, sometimes a day, sometimes two days on a new piano, depending on the instrument. But one of the reasons people come to us from a great distance is that they know Whatever piano they choose here at Cunningham Piano will get to their home in its optimum condition because we have the people to do it. One of the coolest parts about Cunningham Piano Factory is our elevator. This is state-of-the-art 1940 technology, but it allows us to get to any one of our four floors and it's large enough to fit several grand pianos. Come on in. You know, we give tours of our factory to kids in grammar school, to music groups, and I can fit an entire class of first graders on this elevator with me. So here we are. Come on in. So while we're here, I need to stop and say that we also work with organs. Now, many, many churches have organs in them. And they could spend as little as $10,000 for a new organ for a small chapel. And that might be electronic and give us digital sound. And those are pretty cool. But the cost of these can go up from that $10,000 to over a million dollars for a large organ that actually works with just pipes and wind-blown air. Tremendous, tremendous stuff, and they fall anywhere in between that. So that's also a big part of what we do. Come on down. We're passing by a collection of concert grand pianos. And of course, this is the Centennial Grand Piano. This was built in 1876 for the country's centennial, 
and sent to the Philadelphia World's Fair. This model was, maybe not this particular piano, but this model was. Then we have a Yamaha Concert Grand, which just last week was played on by Chick Corea here in Philadelphia. That goes out whenever someone wants a state-of-the-art Yamaha Concert Grand. And right behind us is our finishing area. This is where everything happens that makes a piano look beautiful. That includes that cast iron frame that we saw earlier. These are two cast iron frames. They look the same on the back as that upright did that we just saw. But we're starting to put a beautiful finish on these. We're in the middle of doing it. It's not complete. But we'll take a look at one that's complete in a few moments. Now in between coats of finish, we have to rub the finish, which is a fine sanding. And what that does is it evens out each coat. And we'll use many, many coats of lacquer uh, to give the piano its, its specific look that we want. And a lot of the times it's a beautiful hand rubbed ebony like this. Sometimes it's polished and very shiny. Sometimes it's a wood finish. There's all kinds of things that we can do with the finish. To come around this side, Jim is the head of our finishing department. And he's doing what we call wet sanding. Is that right, Jim? That's correct. We're rubbing it down. So this happens, sanding has to happen how many times when you're finishing a piano? Several times. There's several layers of finish built up on this piano. And uh, we keep rubbing and smoothing it out until we get our desired sheen that we're looking for. That's right. So every time we spray more finish on the piano, it's not perfectly smooth. And that has to be hand rubbed between coats. What we're watching now, Jim has a set of black keys from a piano. The first thing that he does is take off the little bit of dust that might have settled there, and now he's spraying lacquer on it to give it a beautiful look. It's all about technique. Frankly, the speed at which you spray, the amount of spray that you put on there, and the way that you prepare the wood in between each coat has everything to do with the final product. Jim has been doing this for decades. He's an expert. Again, taking care to make sure everything is perfectly even up and down the keyboard. Between each coat, these are going to let, we'll let them dry and then we'll fine sand them between each coat to have a beautiful look when everything is done. It'll protect the wooden key and give the pianist the perfect feel. So this is a piece of wood. It's actually a music rack from an older Steinway grand piano that we've rough sanded. We've stripped off the wood, stripped off the finish, and we're down to the bare wood. So this will be restained to give us the desired color. And that color might change. We're going to walk over here to a piano. This piano has already been stained. These are both fine woods, but of course this one looks much more beautiful. So we've put the desired color on this. We've also put many coats of lacquer on this piano. It is still not complete, still needs a couple more coats of finish. But we're looking at before and after, sort of. <laughs> and this is what we do. Bottom line is, we work so hard to make the piano so musical, we also want it to just look like a beautiful piece of art that it should be as well. So this is a beautiful finish on a wood finished piano, but ebony satin finish is probably the most popular finish ever put on it, on a piano. So this is black, it's hand rubbed, and of course this is a beautiful wood finish. And every kind of shade that you could think of has been done on pianos. In fact, we've done custom finishes, we've done Kelly Green pianos, Candy Apple Red pianos, we did a tan piano once we called the peanut butter piano because <laughs> that's what it looked like to us. So anything can be done to a piano, but these are the most kinds of popular finishes. And of course, this is more polished and this is more satin, less shine, more shine, wood finish and black. And everything's custom done. Jim, thanks again for taking the time to talk to us. What do you think was the most unusual finish that you've ever done? Um. I would say several, many, oh, many years ago, oh, we did a um, Baldwin 7-footer in Battleship Gray High Gloss. 
It was for a, uh, a naval officer. Wow. Uh, he, he put it in his home. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So we can do anything that someone desires. Pretty much. Pretty much. Hey, Maurice. Hey. How are you, man? Oh, doing good. So Maurice happens to be sitting at one of the new Matchless Cunningham pianos. So remember, Cunningham Piano built the Cunningham Piano by hand right here in Philadelphia from 1891 to 1941. We've reintroduced the brand. This has the most gorgeous parts from all over the world. Our hammers are handmade for us in Germany. Our strings are Rosslau music wire. That's the same music wire that goes into Hamburg Steinways and Bosendorfers. That's the most expensive piano in the world. We have a white spruce soundboard, all maple rim. Uh, they are assembled overseas to save on labor expense, but we do all the finishing here. And part of finishing that piano is Maurice Dinkins, who we're sitting with right now. And Maurice, how long have you been with us? Oh, I've been with uh, Cunningham Piano Company for 22 years. Now, Action News, a few years back, did a story on you. Yep. Why did they do that? Well, <laughs> because of the fact that uh, we here at Cunningham Piano Company uh, have had many uh, people like young artists like Lu Yu Zhu Wang. That's uh, right. Want to play p our pianos as well as uh, do concerts and things. And well, that's why we're here. And I, I think you're being very modest. So Maurice has what we call absolute perfect pitch. What that means is that he knows exactly how to tune the piano. He doesn't need a machine. He doesn't even need a tuning fork. Um, but he's been asked to tune for people because he is so good. Alicia Keys. Uh, Patti LaBelle, and McCoy Tyner, McCoy Tyner, Quincy Jones, yep. you already mentioned Yu Jia Wang. Yep. So he's tuned for a lot of people and he's, he's one of the great people here at Cunningham Piano. So thank you so much for taking the time and carry on brother. Right. Thank you. Of course, I save the coolest room for last. This is where we keep all the instruments we have not yet touched. Come on in. So of course, Cunningham Piano Company rebuilds and restores many pianos each year. These are instruments that belong to our customers that are waiting to be restored, that are thinking about restoration. Some of them belong to us and we will rebuild them and resell them to people. Uh, but this is our stock and we've got a lot of work waiting for us. Each piano has a story. This particular one here, this is a gorgeous Kanabi. We saw one with Kurt Brown working on it, also a beautiful cabinet. But this belongs to a family who has sold their home. Right now they're living in a condominium in Center City, but they're building another place. They just don't have space for it. In fact, it might be a couple of years before they have the space. So right now we are storing this piano and probably within a year or so we'll start the work and by the time they're done their home, this will look and play like a gorgeous new piano. We'll be able to deliver it to their new place and they'll enjoy it for the next 70 or 80 years. That's what we do. Hey, Hugh. Hey, Rich. So sorry to stop you, that was beautiful. So. One of the things that we do here at Cunningham Piano, you know, we have the ability, we have expert musicians like yourself that speak with people around the nation, in fact, around the world, and we call that piano concierge. Can you tell me how that works a little bit? Quite simply, when people are looking for a wonderful piano and they're in an area of the country or the world where they don't have access to be able to audition different instruments, they can contact us and we have an in-depth, or you know, I or one of my colleagues will have an in-depth conversation with them and try to understand better what they're looking for, what are their sound preferences, touch preferences, even cabinet preferences. And gathering all that information, we can make some very strong recommendations based on the tremendous inventory that we have. So this is a personalized selection process. The nice thing is that you're working with world-class musicians, if I may say so, people who have had the experience of playing pianos all over the world and can really relate to what people are looking for 
in their ideal piano. So quite simply, piano concierge is our way of helping people find their dream piano. And I have to say, I think we're batting a thousand at this point. I think we really are. So we've had some very happy customers who have never been to the store personally, but they trust our judgment. We have a, we have a great rapport, great relationship. And when the piano arrives in their home, so far, uh, you know, so far we've been very fortunate. We've exceeded all of their expectations. Absolutely. Thank you very much for taking the time. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah go back to practicing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before you practice, this reminds me. So we do a lot of custom restoration. I would say one of the most unusual restorations that we did was a grand piano that was in a house that had a fire. Mm -hmm. Now, thankfully, it was not physically well. It was, but it was not inflamed. It was in a room that on the other side of the wall mm. was a fire. Mm. And the tail end, that's the back end of the piano, was close to that wall. Well, when it came to us, we were expecting smoke, uh, we were expecting humidity, because you put water on fire. We were expecting all these things. We deal with this all the time. But the back end of the piano was literally charred and burned. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so really at that point, we were talking with the family about replacing the piano. And they were all very, very strong in their feelings that they needed this piano. So we actually rebuilt the rim on that piano. Now that's a structural part. That's like taking a beautiful Victorian home, going down to the studs and then replacing studs. So it, it was a very involved restoration, but that's about, oh, there's one other. <laughs> Do you remember the Beckstein that came up from South America? Sure. Yeah, that, that piano. The one with tarantulas inside of it? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> close, close. But in South America, there's a type of termite mm -hmm. that we don't have, thankfully, here in North America. Well, this particular piano, some of the structural beams underneath the instrument mm -hmm. were eaten by termites. Mm -hmm. So we had to replace parts of those structural beams. Again, it would have been an easier thing for that family to choose another piano, but this was their piano. Mm -hmm. They were in love with it. So really, I think we can do anything. I think that speaks to yeah. the fact that not only can we restore, and that also speaks to the fact that many people find pianos, once they have them in their home, they really are part of the family. Mm -hmm. We understand that, and we understand how deep a love those instruments are. They're not just pieces of furniture. They're really things, heirlooms, that are passed down from generation to generation. That's why people will take the time to rebuild a piano because it preserves the memory of a loved one. or their uh, wonderful memories that they've grown up with with that instrument. And when people also choose to have us select their instrument, we have that in mind that whatever piano we select for them through our piano concierge program, we want them and their children and their heirs to enjoy it for generations to come. Hugh, thank you so much for taking the time. Absolutely. And thank you for joining us here at Cunningham Piano Company and taking a tour with me. I've really enjoyed this. Please consider this an invitation to join us in person. You can visit our website, CunninghamPiano.com. You can make requests there, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We make our own videos all the time. For Cunningham Piano Company, I'm Rich Galassini, and I want to thank you for joining us on this tour of our factory.